the previous videos, we have discussed about the derivations of the equations to determine the stresses in pre-stressed concrete beam. It is basically based on the principle of superpositions of the stress diagram due to the axial compressions, bending and also eccentricity. These stresses are to be checked against the stress limit in terms of the compressions and tensions. This is important so that the structure does not fail under the serviceability limit state, which is the most essential part in terms of the design of the pre-stressed concrete member. However, all these are based on the basis that the sections are readily proposed and the geometrical properties are defined. In most cases of the design, we only know that the loops that possibly acting on the pre-stressed member and some basic requirements such as the required spans whether the beam is simply supported and some properties of the materials. With a given problem for the pre-stressed members, in the case that the cross sections of the beam member is not given, this will involve a series of trying and errors of the sections proposed. You will need to propose a sections determine the geometrical property, construct the stress force diagram and derive equations, draw the magnet diagram, propose P and E, determine the tendons, and check the stress limits. If the stress limits fail, you will need to restart the step here for you to repropose a new section. This process will loop continuously until you obtain the stress within the limits. This process is rather tedious and often not properly guided. In order to minimize the trial and error process, there is a process of initial sizing, which during the initial sizing, we obtain the minimum required section modulus. Then we will start proposing the sections. Calculate the geometrical property and check the section modulus against the minimum section modulus obtained during initial sizing. If the section modulus from the geometrical property is less than the minimum requirement, you need to repropose the sections. The advantage of having the initial sizing is you do not need to go through a tedious calculation process for you to know whether the stress limit is acceptable. In another word, you are actually proposing different size of the section until it fulfills the minimum section modulus required. This initial sizing is also advantageous in preventing you from proposing unrealistically large section. You know that the larger the sections will lead to higher degree of permanent actions and self-weight. This will further add on the loops acting on the member and your design will be less economical. So, in this video, we are going to discuss the process of initial sizing. First, you will need to derive the equations from the setup of the beam member on basis of the superposition principles there will be at least four equations, two for the transfer and two for the service. And there will be stresses on top of the beam and at the bottom of the beam. Based on the critical conditions outlined here, 
the equations of stresses are limited by their stress limit in terms of the compressions and tensions. This will result in these four equations. The calculations for the stresses at the transfer and service for the top beam and the bottom beam being constrained by their stress limit. Next, you group the equations for the top of the beam together. There will be one equation for the transfer and one equation for the service. Same goes to stress equations for the bottom of the beam. One equation for the transfer and another for the service. The equation here is rearranged to be simultaneously solved together. That means you need to combine these two equations into an equation. This is the equations after arrangement from the equations at the service. Substitute these equations into this. You will obtain a new equation something like this. Send derivation process goes to the bottom beam. Rearrange the equations from this. Rearrange the equations from this. Substitute these equations into here to form another equation. Now you have two equations here. One is for Z top, another one is for Z bottom. The other parameters here are all known. Based on the given loading, you are able to determine the moment maximum and moment minimum. Based on the assumed losses, you are able to determine the alpha and beta. Based on the methods of pre-stressing, whether it is pre-tension or post-tension, you are able to determine the gamma superior and gamma inferior. You know the concrete strength, FCK, and you are able to calculate the FCTM. The only unknown in this equation it will be Z top. Same goes to this. Z bottom will be the only unknown for that equation. Substitute all the relevant value. You are able to determine the minimum Z top and Z bottom. Next, you propose dimensions for the beam section. Go through a process of analysis for you to determine the Z top and Z bottom. Check the Z top and Z bottom for the dimension proposed against the Z top and Z bottom that you calculate from initial sizing. If the Z top and Z bottom is smaller than the minimum requirement, you will need to enlarge the sections and redo the calculation again to compute a new Z top and Z bottom. This process repeated until you have obtained the Z top and Z bottom greater than the minimum requirement as per the initial sizing. After that, you will proceed with the following calculations based on the section proposed and do a final check for the stress limit. Through this method, you only need to adjust the P and E based on the Magnell diagram so that the stress limit is fulfilled. It is noted that this initial sizing is actually meant for providing guideline for you to propose a suitable cross sections of the member. It doesn't mean that the Z top and Z bottom that you obtain from the cross section must always be greater than the Z top and Z bottom 
minimum the z top and z bottom slightly smaller than the minimum requirement may also end up with adequate stress limit with proper adjustments of p and e but it should not be significantly smaller than the minimum this is due to the fact that the flexibility given by the p and e in order to cater for the limitations of the geometrical property of the section. If you find this difficult to comprehend, you can always try a section with the Z top and Z bottom slightly bigger than the minimum requirement. Then you just need to focus on adjusting the PME to obtain the adequate stress limit for the section.